Uh, hi sir, uh, my name is Ravi. So today I would like to make a video presentation on the case study given by sir. So the first qu question that I've uh, chosen from section A is uh, on the agency theory. Whereby the question is as follows that uh, agency theory of a corporate governance stated that the agent and the principal may have a conflicting interests. So explain these conflicting interests using an example. So to talk about the agency theory, right? First of all, we need to identify what are the parties that are involved in this agency theory. We assume there's a two party involved. So one is a principal and another one is the agent. agent. So we assume uh, this agent uh, is a given responsibility for looking after the right or interests of a uh, principal. Okay. In a corporate structure, there's a two such uh, agency relationship exists. So one is between the uh, shareholders which is a principal and also with uh, the uh, agent is we assume as a board of directors. Another relationship will exit between the board of director and also management. So the board of director acting as a principal whereby the uh, uh, management assume as an agent. Okay. So basically what this uh, uh, agency theory is talking about is that the the theory we are assumed uh, when the principal uh, given some rights or power to the agent to look after their right, we assume that the agent need to uh, uh, act on behalf of the principal. But rather than the case, is that what happened is that the agent is may not act in the best interest of the principal. Okay, the underlying assumption of the agency theory is that agent may pursue different goal rather than pursuing principal's goal, which this may, may contributing to the potential conflicting interest between both parties, between the principal and the agent. Talk about the example of the agency theory. We can take, uh, take an example uh, between the goals of shareholders and also the goal of the uh, management. Okay, so uh, basically for principal, the main goal for the, uh, for the company is that to maximize their own wealth. So when uh, uh, sh uh, the management uh, or the board of director, we assume that they need to act on behalf of the principal, which they need to take action in order to maximize the uh, company's value and also maximize the shareholders' wealth. But rather than doing this, some of the, uh, uh, so uh, in the most of the case in the, uh, 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 explained by the agency theory is that uh, the, the managers or the management might purchase other companies to expand their own individual power or spend money on a net uh, on, uh, on their pet uh, projects okay which instead of working to maximize the value of the corporation stock and also venturing on to, into fraud or they may even manipulate the financial figures in order to meet the, their financial KPIs so that they can obtain their bonuses or the stock price related the benefit. So this may really uh, may cause the conflicting interest with the shareholders' goal, which is to maximize the own shareholders' wealth. Okay, uh, moving to the section B. So I have selected Gold Spot a case study as uh, to to uh, to do a presentation. So the first question is would be discuss what is the approach of the audit committee should be to with the to the suggestion from the finance director that the company's auditor should be appointed to prepare the due diligence report. Okay, It's very common for the, all the companies around here to approach their uh, own uh, company's auditor for the provision of additional services such as ranging from tax planning, bookkeeping, and so fraud investigation and in this case uh, due diligence. Right. So the first of all, the audit committee and uh, the, uh, the audit firm must again carefully consider whether it is ethical or professionally acceptable to follow to allow the auditor to provide the additional services. Okay, the main ethical threat created by these uh, additional services uh, is that is a threat to the objectivity. Okay, the threat is mostly created by in this case is a self review and uh, self uh, interest and also advocacy threat. And if this threat is uh, not able to uh, uh, reduce using the uh, safeguard in play, we should not engage the uh, auditors uh, for the additional services. But if let's say there's a, a safeguard in place that uh, uh, reduce the threat to the acceptable level, then we can uh, the audit auditors and then uh, the companies can engage for the due diligence services. 
okay so some of the example of the safeguard in place it should be using of a separate engagement team for due diligence and also for audit and so we can use a second partner review or engagement quality control review in order to give more uh, uh, object to maintain the objectivity uh, of the engagement both engagement okay and to talk about the audit committee so they should be involved in any decision whether the audit firm can be engaged to provide the non audit service fee therefore when we approach to provide the non uh, audit uh, the non audit service uh, which is the due diligence to the uh, to the company there should be a full discussion between the firm audit firm and those uh, charged with the governance in this case is the audit committee we uh, they need to uh, sit and discuss and getting the approval for the engagement to go ahead so as well to uh, to considering the independence and the objectivity the audit committee should remember that the fundamental ethical principle applies for non audit uh, services as they apply for audit services therefore when co when considering to provide a non audit service the audit committee should evaluate the auditor's uh, competency to uh, perform the work and also the confidentiality issue and also whether they uh, the audit firm able to comply with all the relevant laws and regulation moving on to the second question of the case study which is analyze the range of requirement and restriction that sadly sir the sales director and the gold spot will need to comply with in relation to the his proposed purchase of gold spot shares and his wife's proposed sales of land to gold spot okay since the uh, the sales director and the company involved in the related party transaction in relation to his proposed uh, sales uh, purchase of a gold spot shares and also sales of a wife land to company the company and the director both need to take uh, a few requirements before finalizing the transaction the starting point would be the finance director uh, the sales director need to inform his board of director about his intention to purchase a company shares and also uh propose uh, sales of wife land to the company okay other than that the main uh, main uh, requirement is would be uh, obtaining shareholders approval before finalizing this related party transaction okay so normally 50% of the shares uh, shareholders need to approve this transaction however we need to uh, 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 check the company's article or association for the for uh, for uh, for the approval a percentage uh, because uh, sometimes a higher percentage of approval is needed right the shareholders approval can be given at a general meeting of shareholders and also is given can be given in a later resolution okay uh, and also we need to take note that if we say the uh, shareholders approval cannot be given before the exchange of contract the contract must be conditional on uh, such approval being given okay and also other than that the company need to uh, ensure that the uh, the transaction between the director which is the related party transaction are being transacted at the arms length okay for example let's say the uh, sales of land uh, is let's say is a market value at 50 million so uh, if the company buys at a higher value from the director let's say more than 50 million 60 million definitely is uh, the 10 million uh, differences is causing a loss for the company right so hence the company need to ensure there's no such transaction take place so what are the safeguard can uh, can uh, can be taken to to avoid this kind of things is that uh, the company can engage an independent valuer to 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 value to get the mark uh, to get a market value of the land before uh, entering into transaction with the director okay thank you so much that's all